These Android-based TV boxes are readily available and affordable, but can you run your 3D printer with it? Let's find out. Hello everyone, Chris here, and a while ago my buddy Chris Russell over at Practical Printing reached out to me and asked if I had any experience running Octoprint on an Android TV box. Given the state of Raspberry Pi, we're all looking for different ways to utilize Octoprint to run our 3D printers to avoid that high cost. And the Android TV box seems like a great candidate. And there's several ways that you could conquer this. But the one easy solution that I wanted to try first was Octo4a. You might have seen my video on this product. Basically, it's an open source GitHub project that you can use on your Android phone to control your 3D printer. And the TV box shouldn't be that far from this configuration, but after a little looking around, testing a few things here and there, there are a few hurdles you have to jump over to get this all to work. But that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna walk through all the steps it takes to get one of these Android TV boxes up and running with Octo4a, utilizing Octoprint to control your 3D printer and have a camera available for time-lapse. So let's jump into it. We'll start with the TV box, all the things I use to get all this set up and working. And here's the Android TV box we're gonna be working with today. This is a T95, they call it. I got it off Amazon for right at $30. This is an older model. It uses an all winter chip but it is extremely affordable and has more than enough horsepower to run Octo4a and Octoprint for your 3D printer. Now it does come with a power adapter and a remote, but the remote is definitely not gonna be the best way to get all this set up. You could do it, but I don't think I would wanna do all these steps just with the remote. You're gonna be much better off if you grab a keyboard, a mouse, just for the setup, you won't need it after that but you're also gonna want some sort of camera. Today I'm using a Logitech C270. It's affordable and I have quite a few of them. And a hub. Again, you probably won't need this hub after you get everything set up, but because we're using the mouse and the keyboard, we're gonna to wanna to run all these at the same time. And remember, we do have our Prusa printer over here we need to control, so it's gonna have a USB cable as well, taking up a port. So that hub's gonna come in handy. But definitely consider the mouse and keyboard if you're going to try to do one of these installs on one of these Android boxes. It is probably important to note the ports I have available on this T95 box. There is Ethernet and HDMI, which we are going to utilize. It also does Wi-Fi. So whichever way you want to go there. And it does have two USB ports and SD storage. Now we're not necessarily going to need that SD storage, but if you want to get really creative, you can log into these with a Linux file system. You can do all kinds of tricky things to hack these. But today we're just focused on Octo4a. So there are quite a few things we have to do to get set up and running with Octo4a on one of these Android TV boxes. And there are a few things that didn't work quite right, so I had to hack my way around them. But I will show you all the steps that I took to get this done. But we do have some initial items that we have to take care of on one of these Android boxes to even make it work like punch in our network information, and some way that I can share the screen with you as we walk through this setup. You might not want to do this, but some sort of remote desktop server would be really handy to install on one of these boxes so that you can access it from a different machine. You don't necessarily have to have a TV or a remote to utilize the box. So consider that. I went with AirDroid for this project, and that's what we're going to take a look at next. So to get us off and running here, all I did was unplug the HDMI on this monitor I have on my PC, and I'm gonna plug that in to our Android box. Then I've got my USB hub. We'll plug that in. My 3D printer, I'm gonna put in the other port because I'm not gonna change that. And then on the hub, I have the dongle for my mouse, my keyboard, and my Logitech C270. Once we're done with the setup, we can just take our camera and plug it directly into the TV box after we're done with this hub. Again, we won't need the keyboard and mouse forever. It's just really handy to use while you're getting set up. And with all that done, I'm just gonna plug it in and let it boot up for the first time. So the box is booting up. Now to get us started, I'm just gonna have the camera on the screen here. I'm going to use AirDroid once again so that I can do a screen share so that it's a lot more convenient for you to watch and for me to make the video. 
And here we are in our main screen. A lot of these Android boxes look the same. The OS is going to be pretty much the same for a lot of these. Remember, this is the all-winner chip. There's a lot of different types of chips inside these boxes. But to get us started here, we need some network access. We do need to download a few programs to make this work. So that's the first thing you're going to have to do. I just want to walk you through this step by step, just to show you how much work it might be. But I'm just going to set up network, we'll turn on Wi-Fi, and we'll log into our available network. If you're using the mouse on these, you can left click for your options, and then it seems like most of the time right click will back you out of the menus. You can also use the keyboard or that remote if you really want to. We're now on the network successfully, so the next thing you're going to want to do is go to Google Play so that we can start downloading a few things. You're also going to want to use the Chrome browser, but we'll jump into that as soon as the reboot's done. There are a couple different ways that you can get packages for these boxes. Google Play is the most common one, but if you don't see the app that you want, you can try other sources. But we'll start with Google Play, and you will need a Google account. So we'll sign in and verify our identity. And we're into Google Play. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is grab AirDroid. Again, you don't have to do this, but it's going to make it a lot easier for me to share my screen with you while we walk through these steps. Basically, it's a remote desktop server you can use on Android devices. There are a couple different pieces to AirDroid. Some of them are paid for. But what we need just for this video is Cast. And we'll install it. And from here, what we can do is launch the Windows version of AirDroid Cast and we can use this code on our Android box and pull up that screen. So back to our TV box, we'll punch in our code and we'll start the casting. Now our Android box is casting to our Windows machine, so we can stop using our camera to capture the screen. We can just go to screen share. Now with the free version of AirDroid Cast, you can't use it as a remote control, but you can see what's going on. So I still have to use my mouse and keyboard that are hooked up to my TV box but again, it just helps me make the video. So we can just back out of screen and we can continue to configure our Octo4a setup. And that's the next thing we need to do. We'll go out to Chrome and we're going to head to the Octo4a GitHub. We'll navigate to GitHub and then you can scroll down a bit. We need to head to releases so we can get the newest release. Here's the release page and we need the APK file. This one right here. So we'll download it. Once the download is complete, we can just hit open. There's going to be a few warnings. You might get a security setting that you need to adjust. You should be able to just go to settings. And we're going to allow Chrome to install this type of application to get around this. I have had issues where the package says it was unable to parse it. But if I download it a second time, it will go ahead and work. So now that we're around the security portion, we've allowed Chrome. We can go ahead and hit install. The app will be installed and then we can hit open and it's going to start the Octoprint portion of the install. No installation exists, so we'll install Octoprint. And we'll allow it to access photos, medias, and files so we can use the storage. Now this part can take 20 or 30 minutes because it does have to download and install everything. So we'll come back in a minute when this is complete. It will roll through 25%, 50% up here until it's done. So during the install process, you're going to get a couple of messages asking you to allow your device to access your Mark III printer, the serial device. So answer those or whatever printer you have, but make sure you can access that. And then you're going to get this message to disable battery optimization. Now this is more for cell phones. It's just built in, but just go ahead and hit never ask again. And now Octoprint is up and running. You can access it from this URL. So we'll go back to our PC that we usually use and we'll just log in and run through the wizard. We can just open up a browser and head to that IP. Remember you do need your colon port number, but it's right there in the Octoprint server and it's going to be just like any other Octoprint instance. We'll run through the wizard, set up our username and password, connectivity check, enable anonymous user tracking, plug in blacklist and we'll just keep our profile the same for the defaults and then you have your system restart commands now this is one of the only things I'm not sure of 
It should work the same because it's Android OS. I haven't tested it, but we might have to adjust these a little bit to get them to work for this TV box. But we'll just leave it for Octo 4A defaults for now. Hit next and finish. And you see it's in safe mode up here. I've had it come up that way a couple of times. If you reboot your Android TV box, shut it down and restart it successfully, it shouldn't do that any longer. Sometimes it gets confused on the way up and sticks it in safe mode. You can come up here and restart Octoprint. And that should take care of it as well. But from here, all we have to do is connect up to our printer. Baud rate for Prusa, 115200. I'll go ahead and save the connection settings. We can connect up. Printer rebooted. We can see the G-code files and we're pulling in temperatures so the printer's working correctly. And if you go to control, you'll notice the webcam stream isn't starting. It's because we didn't start it on the Octoprint server side. All we have to do to fix that is go to settings and toggle enable camera server. You can see the camera server is now running back to Octoprint, and there's our camera. And while you're in here, we'll go ahead and save our time-lapse settings. So Octoprint is ready to use. And this is where I ran into the first issue. Again, Octo4a is designed to be run on a cell phone. The Android OS on the TV box is going to be similar, but because of how it's set up, this is probably what caused this. But if you reboot your Android TV box, Octoprint, Octo4a won't start automatically, even though you have it selected in the Octo4a settings. So there was a way around that. So if we just go to settings and go to more settings and reboot our Android box, mine's in device preferences under about, and we just hit restart, you'll notice over in your browser that your Octoprint instance doesn't come back after the reboot. If you take a look, there is no evidence of it restarting. And if you start it back up, it will start successfully. But even if you have this start on boot option enabled, it won't restart on its own. But fortunately, there's a program you can install on your Android TV box that'll handle this. So I'm gonna head back to Google Play and we're gonna search for MacroDroid. This is the one right here, device automation and we'll install it. MacroDroid is a really cool set of tools that lets you automate a lot of different things on your phone or any Android OS. And this will enable us to start Octoprint on Reboot. When it starts up, it's gonna give you a little bit of a tutorial, but it's really easy to use. We're just gonna add Macro Wizard. On the Triggers page, we're gonna to go to Device Events and Device Boot. That's our trigger. And then we'll go up here to Actions, Applications, and Launch Application. Requires draw overlays. That's so it can run a program over another to be able to start Octoprint. So we have to change that setting. So we can back out, go to Settings, More Settings, Apps, Special App Access, and Display Over Other Apps. And we're going to allow MacroDroid to do that, as well as Octoprint for Android. We're good there. We can go back into MacroDroid and finish up our macro. Make sure your trigger is still device boot. Actions, applications, launch application. We're going to select application, and we'll scroll down and grab Octoprint for Android. And we'll just force new since we expect it to do this at boot. So hit OK. And then down here, you can hit your check mark to save it. And name it something. We'll just call ours Octo4A underscore start. And just to verify, you can click on macros down here and make sure that it's in the list and the triggers and the application event are correct. And now you can back out. And from here, I just restart your TV box to verify that it's working correctly. Again, settings, more settings, device preference, this is for me, about, restart. And after that restart, you can see Octoprint started automatically. And if we head over to the browser, we can reload that. And Octoprint is up, connected to the printer, ready to go. 
But we do have one more issue we need to fix, and that's with the camera starting. So we got Octo 4A and Octo Print starting successfully on Reboot, but there was one more issue that I had to hack my way around, and I got the fix for this one over on the GitHub page in the Issues section. There was somebody over there having the same problem, and all they did was reinstall an older version of Octo 4A over the current version, and that seemed to be the workaround. That being that the camera does not start automatically when Octo 4A starts up. You have to go in and start it by hand. And just to confirm, even though enable camera server is ticked from the main page, you have no preview. It is disabled. But if you head back to the main screen and open up Chrome one more time, we'll head back to the Octo 4A GitHub, back to the releases page, and we installed 1.2.0, we're just going to grab 1.1.2, again the APK file. We can just open it, and it's not going to install the full app, but enough to seem to get that camera going. So we'll hit install, and we'll hit open. Now when Octoprint boots, you can see the camera server is running, and then if you open up Octoprint in your browser, you can head over to control, and there's your camera. It does start every time the Android box boots. So we fixed two big problems. The thing's starting on reboot. But there are a couple of other issues, unfortunately. So Octoprint is up and running on our Android TV box. And you can monitor your printer while it's printing with that camera. But I wanted to do some testing to make sure this box was going to run well enough to get good quality prints. And the first thing I wanted to test, I want to make sure that you can do a time lapse. And you cannot. Every time I start a time lapse, the video feed will shut down and it can't take the capture. Now this could be something very simple, like you can't write to a file system. There might be a permissions problem. But at this point, I really don't want to investigate it any further. If I have to get in command line to fix something, it's probably not worth going this route. But I still did want to go ahead and give it a test, just to make sure you can run print successfully and at least monitor it, even if you can't capture the time lapse. So I ran many tests. Let's take a look at a couple. So I ran quite a few different benchies. This was my first attempt. Now I was monitoring it with the camera. Again, I can't do time lapse, but the benchy came out just fine. This is what I would expect from the Prusa Mark III. Quality's good, no issues to speak of. This is pretty cheap filament. There might be a little bit of stringing, but a good print all in all. And I did several of these and they came out pretty much the same. But then, I had one that didn't come out so good. And that's this one right here. You can see these blobs on the outside. You can see them up here on the smokestack. That's caused by dwell. And I actually did see it do this process while it was finishing up here. The printer would stall out. And that's usually caused by when you're running Octoprint, it can be caused a lot by a lot of different things, but when you're running Octoprint, it's caused by it not being able to get the G code over to the printer fast enough. So something was probably going on with the Android box at this time, causing lag and causing issues on your print. So that's not good. That's not something you want to see with this Android TV box if you're going to try to run Octoprint on it. So given all the things that I've seen with this, it is pretty easy to get Octo 4A up and running on your Android TV box and that will get you to Octoprint somewhat. We did have to hack around just a little bit to get everything working, and there's a lot of the features that do not work in this setup, like time-lapse. I did try to install some plugins, most of those were a no-go as well. Just given the fact that the operating system that Octo4A runs on, and maybe a little bit of the OS that's on this Android TV box. But all in all, if you're not gonna get good consistent print quality out of this setup, there's really not a lot of point in doing it. So would I try to do this with Octo4A? Probably not. But we're not quite done yet. I think we still can use this hardware, maybe just not with the default OS. We could load another type and get this up and running much better. But that will be for another video. So hopefully you found this interesting. That is it for today. And I'll see you really soon on the next one.